And then the last thing at the bottom is your well-being. And of course, that is your personal happiness. Um, I have been very lucky because I, as a personality, am, am a relatively happy person. Uh, how do you know that? Well, uh, you know that because when you open your eyes in the morning, you smile and giggle. And you sort of know that that's sort of the, that's going to be your personality sort of like for life is that, you know, there wasn't any reason. You just are happy and you get up and you're cheerful and you're energetic and you go. Now, a lot of you at this moment won't know that. You really won't know that because you're, you're wrapped up in certain kinds of struggles that you're back here. You know, I mean, you're not this hard. I, I hope you're not this bad off, but all of you have little reflections of this. And it's always these, these things that, 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 Quite frankly, those of you that are exhausted most of the time, and those of you that have a great struggles with being tired, it has a lot to do with just plain old self-induced, you know, your thinking that is actually exhausting you. Because there's no excuse for anybody that's young to be exhausted. This is when you're supposed to have the maximum energy, this is when you're supposed to have the most sex, this is when you're supposed to have everything is supposed to be the maximum. And the thing about it is, is that you're supposed to have energy for that all day long. You see, and so if, if you don't, there's something off that you may look for and try to find out because once you get that straightened out, then you will see that you will have this excess of energy. Uh, in terms of well-being, I want to leave you with something that um, is the wisest thing that I ever heard about happiness. Um, this comes from an author. She's a, she's a Danish author. Her name is Isaac Dennison. And in a short story she laid out, there are two philosophers talking and one says, what, what do you think is the source of true happiness? And the other man says, there are only three sources of real happiness in the world. The first source is an excess of energy. Just what I was talking about. When you have a burst of energy that is bigger than anything, you are automatically happy. You are the happiest person in the world. And you find that coming out of the blue for no reason at all except there's the energy, there's all of the, of the kind of stuff churning around in you and that's what makes you happy. The second one is more philosophical. I will swear that this is one of the real basis of happiness and that is when you finally discover that you are able to do the work of God. Now I am not a religious person. So this does not have any religious connotations for me exactly perhaps in the way it was said. But what do you, how would you interpret that when you are finally doing the work of God? When you are finally like creating something that can live on its own, almost? I, I think more it's that you're doing what, doing what you feel you were put on this earth to do. You see, you, you found the place. Now that can be such a myriad of things. This does not relate necessarily to creating artworks or anything. It can be having a family. It can be working with children. It can be any, anything that you finally discover that you know this is where you belong and this is how you are going to actually leave your hand on the world and leave that in a way that you, know, you were meant to do. And all of you will find that, I hope because that is going to be one of the sources of your greatest happiness. For me, it is the source of my greatest happiness, and it is how, toward the end of my life, my well-being is so high, in which everyone says that I seem to be, you know, one of the happiest people they ever met. Oh, these foolish people. But, you know, it is somewhat true. Because um, I, I meet a lot of people my age, and I'm just going, this depressed mess, what's wrong with him? You know, and so it just doesn't, you know, this is one of the things with old age, people get, start getting really depressed and they don't really keep up a kind of energy. The third is also very philosophical, and it's just very sort of simple. When pain ceases. And it's something to think about a little bit because, of course, anyone that has been in real pain knows that, that that's really the source of happiness. But I think it's a bigger thing. I think you will find lots of adults that are just in a general sense of pain. Their whole life is painful. Their whole way of dealing with other people is painful. Their whole way of going about things is painful. Um, everything brings them pain. And I think that when they finally work out how to actually get these things together, their pain ceases and they can be happy. That's not a constant state. In fact, that's something that you must understand that well-being is not a constant state. You're always, notice how my well-being collapses in the times of crisis. 
you see, when the crisis kind of wipes out, when you have to actually spend two years uh, racking with pain you know, in the hospital, your well-being is not terribly high. This is not going to help you. Um, so that is one of these things that uh, basically uh, you know, is a really important matter. Uh, in terms of money, I'm sure that the chart is going to be much different for all of you because I'm sure all of you are going to be much richer than I ever was. And that you're actually going to, because in a sense it's the sort of, uh, the, 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 the kind of mean of the time that you would actually be more prosperous. Um, and it's also because of my mindset, which was against it. So therefore, I was never ever, that was never ever a goal of mine. And I think that today, it's more of a goal of everybody. So I think that probably, uh, once I understood that money could be incredibly useful. Uh, for those of you that took this class just because you thought it might be interesting, I think when you finish the class and you finish making your films, something has been set up on your personality. This is a possibility. And it means that if you just make a backtrack and you don't try to pursue this, it means that you're not taking advantage of the things that you now have learned as part of your possibility and your potential. And that's when you're betraying what you really have inside you. And that's what I found is that just being here, sitting here, means that more than likely your life's going to go like this because you're sitting here looking at it. You didn't have any idea about how it was going to be laid out, but now that you see it, it almost just it is a sort of door in which it just opens what's going to happen to you because now you have, an, you have a sort of roadmap about how it's going to move and what you have to do to prepare for it.